everyone, you're very welcome to Camogie Pro Podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV, Tipperary Camogie's brand new YouTube channel. Um, I'm delighted for this week's episode to have Kevin Hanley out from behind the camera to in front of the camera um, to discuss uh, the fact that he is the hashtag bring it on GA super value ambassador. Kevin, you're very welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much, Geraldine. It's, uh, it's different being in, in front of camera, but uh, yeah, it's all, it's all good. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, Kevin got on board uh, with the Tiberia Camogie PR Committee this year. I suppose at the start of the year, we were looking for uh, volunteers and Kevin was actually uh, recommended to me by Stephen Gleeson of Tip FM. And when I got in touch with Kevin, he was more than willing to help out. And I suppose Kevin's fair to say, being the driving force behind our podcast and you're, you're the man that does all the editing and puts it all together. Um, you've been excellent at matches, helping with video and interviews and tweeting and so forth. And we were all just pure delighted when we heard about that you were going to be um, on a brand new advert for Super Value and the GAA. Um, I'm sure most people have seen it now on TV and on social media. Um, it's a brilliant campaign, a bring it on campaign. Um, it's all about, I suppose, the GAA's commitment to increase sports participation um, in sports people from diverse backgrounds uh, by 30% by 2025. And um, I have to say, I'm really impressed with the advert. And um, just how did it all come about, Kevin? I suppose, did you get a phone call yeah. one day saying, would you take part? Or how does how do you end up being a TV <laughs> star like that? <laughs> well, uh, I guess that's, yeah, no. Um, I got, a, there was a random day, I got an email from Adam House, who's uh, over the As I Am charity, which is, uh, for um, autism for Ireland and I've done I've written blogs and I've done a few bits with with them over the years and uh, he knows how big of a GA person you know how big a fan I am of uh, the GA um, at all you know at all codes at all levels and and uh, he knew he knew how passionate I was so he, he just said in the email that there was an opportunity to to work with super value uh, and be in an ad and they would like to talk to you about more about it and uh, he just says was it okay if I passed on your details and uh, he did and then the next day they phoned me and we had a good chat about it and uh, and just about the you know the different diversity the inclusion for people with disabilities or um, different backgrounds or you know, with, you know, women in sport as well, and um, with uh, LGBT as well. So trying to bring it all to the fore, which I was, you know, really happy to support. And, uh, you know, at that point, I was really looking forward to the whole campaign. And what did involve then? Was it a day of recording the advert and then I think another launch day? Was that how it happened? Or Yeah, um, so after that, then they said... Uh, they would organize um, a day. It was over two days of filming. So I, I was only going to be, it was up in Abbottstown. So, uh, and uh, they said like, um, you know, it was kind of chopping and changing, you know, like it was, but, uh, and then obviously they just said, uh, this is the day that they would need me for, for the ad. And uh Obviously, with, with um, guidelines and all that, with COVID, it was kind of different. Like, I had to get a COVID test before I could do filming, and um, and uh, I had to make sure I was uh, a, a rapid test as well on the day of filming, you know, to that all the safety precautions were, yeah. were followed. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was an interesting day. It was a long day of filming, like, you know, uh, um, but uh, yeah, no, I, it was it was a, a day like you 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 don't it's not a normal day that you you know like but uh, it was it was an exciting day and very much learned a whole lot about behind the camera and just seeing yeah, how yeah because I suppose that's what you're interested in and your qualifications is media mm. it's skills isn't it and yeah I suppose it must be great to see a, a production like that such professional setup and all that yeah no it was like because. Uh, uh, you know, like you see some of the tricks behind the camera and how, it, you know, how it's all put together and how everyone has their different roles, you know, and the big team, you don't realize how much uh, a, a production like that for one minute ad, how much 
<laughs> filming and and production goes into it like so uh you know you have your makeup you have your sound you have your lights you have um people behind the camera cameramen um directors producers so yeah no it was it was a whole day like uh, and ma- and wardrobe and making sure you're on, stand at the right position and doing takes after takes after takes after takes after takes but uh, yeah it was exciting you know Cool. And then obviously the launch then was held recently. So what's the reaction been like since, you know, I've I seen you on the paper and mm. on the radio and, and I, I presume everything is all getting a really positive reaction. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy, like uh, online and, and um, you know, people telling me, see me on the telly and on paper on radio. So, uh, yeah, no, I have been like totally uh, overwhelmed by all the, the positivity and, you know, everyone... Um, saying how great is a campaign and seeing how you know diverse diverse something is that it's not like the norm or the usual you know like um, you don't usually see people from you know from different backgrounds in a one minute ad you know the impact of that to, to show for young kids to have you know people to look up to from if they have a disability or if they are from a, a, a different background or, you know, if even for, you know, people who are in the LGBT community or um, women in sport as well, that, you know, that, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 um, it's a great inclusion. Um, and, you know, to be on, you know, for the whole summer, you know, it'll hopefully drive it on and, you know they're obviously going to have more kind of videos and and things during the summer as well and uh, to keep the campaign going uh which is fantastic you know yeah look it's a really good campaign and i think uh, everyone has seen it you know it struck a chord with everyone um i suppose kevin like i said i got to know you properly this mm. year but um i would have seen you know um uh, stuff you've done online before interviews and um I suppose it, I would have always known you as, you know, a real passionate uh, GA man, Tipperary GA supporter, hurling the football. But I suppose you had a very close bond with the Tipperary footballers and and then your own club and all that. So how yeah. did you get involved with the GA? Was it something your whole life or something in the latter years? Or? Uh, yeah, no, obviously at the start, it was just going to matches and, and supporting teams and Tipperary teams. Um, and I, like, I didn't think, I, you know, I get involved I just was happy kind of going and watching games and all that but uh, yeah. um, like over time you know it just kind of you just kind of became kind of known I guess because going to all matches and using social media making little videos um, for Tipperary like uh, I remember back in 2016 when Tip footballers got to the All Ireland semi final, and I just kind of made a few videos to wishing all players good luck and all that. And you know, that kind of got a good reaction. And then I remember uh, in the quarter final, Peter Atchison, you know, giving me his jersey after the game uh, when they beat Galway and different things. So, um, like, and then kind of just a bond, you know, the kind of connection with Tip GA as well. And, uh, um, and, then recently, like, um, you know, my own club asked me to, you know, help out when I can, you know, to just come in as assistant secretary, you know, for the year and, you know, help out with different things. And uh, then I got the opportunity, as you said, with Tipperary Camogie, you know, kind of helping out with social media or putting, you know, videos together with the podcast or, you know, even tweeting, uh, you know, kind of using kind of the skills that I've, had and kind of got better over the years and you know that was you know a great opportunity for someone like you who's so big into GA and used to go into all the matches you must have found you know the lockdown and COVID yeah. and you know behind closed doors and all this you must have found that very tough last year and even into this year yeah. again now yeah no it was tough like obviously it's not it's not the same I know it's grand having it on telly and you know you get to watch it but there's nothing beats like a big, you know, final, once a final in Turles or an All Ireland in Crow Park with a full stadium and, you know, the social aspect, you know, of 
of being autistic as well you know sometimes I wouldn't be great socially or you know my you know social skills so uh, being in the GA and helping out with all the different things that I've done uh, it's kind of pushed my social skills and kind of getting to know people and being friends with a good lot of people as well so you lose that uh, aspect of of, uh, of that but you know it's, it was tough like you know just you didn't feel like a normal kind of situation obviously it wasn't a normal situation but uh, um, you know it, it was you know in the moment it is tough you know but um, you just kind of keep the head down and you know you just make the best out of the situation I guess uh, yeah is what I'd say. and how then you know watching I suppose tip footballers win the monster final last year and they weren't able to be there that was that was yeah. kind of bittersweet as well I'd imagine yeah no it was like um it was bittersweet like you'd be happy for them and you'd be happy for the moment you know for them to have a big moment like that and obviously like i've followed tip football for years and years and uh you know there, there's been bad days and being down and relegated and um and you know people kind of putting you down and saying oh not achieve anything and uh you know to Obviously, for them to to achieve the big ones, the final, uh, you know, you'd be happy for them, and then you'd be a bit kind of at the same time. Or oh, what if, you know, if we were there and all the family and friends, it would have been yeah. a, a special moment. But you know, it wasn't to be. And just go back to, I suppose, you're um, an advocate for uh, autism, and I know you do a lot of work with as I am and. Um, what was it like for you growing up with autism? Uh, it was challenging, like it was, uh, there was good moments and then there was kind of tough moments as well, uh, obviously with social skills um, and even like developing into teenager and the teenager uh, and, you know, the adulthood as well. Um, and we, you know, I had dyslexia as well, so, um, you know, reading and writing didn't, re you know, didn't, uh, took time as well to, uh, to um, improve, but, uh, like, you know, the education system, well, you know, didn't really go well for me, but, um, you know, over time, you kind of just, you know, good support from my parents and all that uh, was was a big help. But uh, uh, it was it was challenging, like um, you know, for families and uh, <coughs> you know, being autistic, you know, um, the, you would you know you would kind of think to yourself, oh, am I any good? You'd overthink things. You think, um, am I you know uh, ever going to achieve anything or you know because you don't you don't see many autistic people you know in, in maybe in the media or you know um you know achieving stuff so uh you know i, I kind of took my own path you know and uh, just kind of took you know my own kind of journey and uh uh you know so that was really kind of my story i guess yeah i think that sums it up taking your own path you know that's a great mm. line and i think because you took your own path i think you're you know an inspiration for a lot of people out there and um you know it's great like you said to you you are a role model you're seen as a role model and i think super value chose very wisely when they uh, you know picked you as one of their ambassadors like like all the ambassadors that they picked uh it's great and you know it's great for temporary so we're delighted to bring Kamogi to say that oh you know <laughs> we know Kevin and he works with us and you know um I suppose maybe just to let people know you know what what does it take you know we've I think we've done um is this our seven or eight podcast now yeah. and um you know just kind of an idea a few of us had at the start of the year and we said we'd see how it goes and um you know mm -hmm. we'll be we'll be doing a lot more of them hopefully throughout the summer when the championship starts but um I suppose we had an idea, but we didn't really know how to do it. But thankfully, yeah. you came on board. And I suppose we'll say some of the podcasts done in the past, like we've interviewed Claire Grogan and Orla Dwyer, and uh, we've done them on Zoom, a video call. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what you want to tell people maybe what involves them for doing it for that until actually getting it out there on the YouTube link and yeah. getting it out for other people to see? Yeah, no, like, obviously, 
you do a lot of hard work trying to interview and getting all the information out and uh with with the you know with presenting the podcast so and and obviously then i'm just sitting in the back watching it and and thinking about putting it together but um and then obviously i just kind of download the videos and uh bring it in uh use final cut pro uh which you know i used when i was doing my tv and film course in limerick and uh yeah you know obviously you just kind of taking it and using as much as you can and uh um obviously it's good you know it's uh it's it's a long process you know because you're sitting there for a few hours and watching the same interview over over again and cutting bits out putting photographs here um obviously with the intros and if the writing has to you know be in a certain place um so like obviously you get to know a lot of the video is quite well by the end of uh, of the editing process but i uh, like i enjoy yeah, editing nice. it's it's uh, it's it's a good it's you know it's good to uh um for me but uh, yeah no it's it's you know people think it, it, it's dead easy to put something together but if you know what you're doing it's not too bad i guess well if you can fix all my mistakes and my <laughs> my stuttering and my ums and ahs and make it look uh a lot more professional. I, I think it, it definitely isn't an easy job and, and you're doing a very good job on it. Um, so just looking ahead, I suppose, to the summer, to hurling football, camogie, ladies football. Mm. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Could we, could we get back yeah. to Crow Park this year with one of our teams? Fingers crossed. Uh, uh, obviously, there's a big weekend with, with, with matches um, coming up over the next couple of weeks. And... Uh, yeah, with 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 two football, like obviously, I'll I'll always support them and stay confident. But you know, it's it hasn't gone ideal this year, so uh, you know we'll see where the the road takes us. But uh, yeah, you know, and and there will be good days ahead. I I know that for sure. Um, with Harlan, um, you know, you 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 want to get back up there to an All Ireland semi final final. Uh, win Liam McCarty again. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes. They have good players. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's been a lot of pressure on Tip Hurling that, you know, maybe they're getting an aging team or whatever, but there's a lot of young lads and I know they'll, you know, bring a lot of energy into the team. Um, with Camogie, I've been very impressed, like, um, a lot uh, of, of players, you know, getting to know um, they've, you know, they were very unlucky uh, not making the league final this year, which, yeah, you know, uh, with five minutes to go to, you know, to be in a good lead and, you know, but um, I, like, I have full confidence that from, they'll learn a huge amount from that and if they're in the same situation and closing out a game, uh, you know, in, in the championship, they're not going to let it lead like that. Uh, fall again so you know I'm sure they'll take obviously uh, good learning from from the, the league semi-final and uh, the lady footballers obviously you know they haven't had a, a great season uh, but I'm sure they'll give it everything for the championship as well like yeah so all to play for really in the summer and I suppose uh, Kevin like the rest of us we'll all be keeping a close eye on the uh, and all the blue and gold teams that um, go out this summer and hopefully as the summer goes on, maybe we'll get bigger crowds back to we can all be there and we can all, all celebrate it. So at the moment, I think you're the only one that's got to Crow Park uh, with the launch <laughs> of, of the campaign. So hopefully you won't be the only temporary man in Crow Park this year. A few more oh, yeah. will, will get to go as well. Um, so Kevin, thanks a million for joining us on the podcast. Great to have a chat with you. And um, everyone keep a lookout for the Bring It On advert uh, on TV and on social media it's a great campaign and um, like I said it aims to highlight the importance of diversity and inclusion the GEA and I think it's just a brilliant message and uh, Kevin is you know is a fantastic ambassador and fantastic spokesperson and uh, great to have you on the podcast. Cheers thank you Geraldine. For the next part of the show we'll preview the senior and intermediate championship which is just days away from kicking off. To look ahead to the senior championship we have interviews with Ethan McGrath Super A senior giant captain 
and Niamh Lillis, former Tipperary Senior Camogie Selector. For the Intermediate Championship, we have an interview with Casey McCormick, uh, analysis here on the Camogie Report, and defender Emma Carey. I'm joined here by Tipperary Senior Camogie Giant Captain Aoife McGrath. Aoife, I suppose before we, can look forward, before we can look forward to the Championship, I suppose we need to look back first. Just the last two games you had competitively with Cork and Kilkenny, um, I lost to Cork in the Munster semi-final and that defeat to Kilkenny in the league semi-final. What are the lessons, I suppose, that you learned from that that you'll take forward now into Championship? Um, I suppose, yeah, thankfully in the run into the Championship, things are a bit different this year. Like We don't have the challenge matches, but we've got good games throughout the league and the Munster Championship. I suppose against Kilkenny, we were probably disappointed coming away, having lost in a game that we, we probably could have won. But I suppose we took good confidence from it that, like, you know, we are capable of competing with the best and look little things on the day and, and the result could have gone a different way. Like, so I suppose that gave us good confidence. Um, and then the Munster semi-final against Cork, I suppose, kind of, again, lessons learned that, you know, you can't get ahead of yourself. Every day you go out, you need to be at the top of your game, otherwise you won't win. And, yeah, look, we have things to improve on. But, um, no, we've taken good confidence from the game so far and look things to work on but also great positives coming out of both and I suppose first up is awfully away on Sunday the 18th um, so the old cliche it's hard to beat any team twice in the one year you had a comprehensive win over them in, in the league um, do you know how would you focus for them now and not take, from gra- take them for granted yeah I suppose the awfully game was a strange one we hadn't played them in competitively in a good few years and now we're playing them again in quick success quick succession um, look awfully a good team they, they're building the last few years and look it's going to take a good performance again to beat them the league while it, like everyone wants to play, win in the league like do you know the championship is what really people are building for so look we know we're going to get a tough test against awfully and we have to be, be prepared as if we were playing any team like the likes of, of Kilkenny, Cork or Galway we need to prepare for awfully just as well because you never know championship any any, on, a, on any given day, anyone can win. And then after that, then there's Limerick and Wexford. Um, I suppose two teams that are probably on an upward curve, you know. Um, Wexford especially, I suppose, had a few poor years and uh, they seem, things seem to be going better for them. Limerick have a new manager and I suppose teams like that are probably focused on trying to, to you know, they probably see the likes of Cork, Kilkenny uh, and Galway maybe a step too far for them this year. But I'm sure they all have eyes on trying to, to, to knock you off your spot. Yeah, definitely. I suppose Wexford and Limerick are, are two teams that always give us tough games. Um, Limerick have been going very well. They they took Kilkenny to the wire again. Um, do you know, got to a Munster final as well. Like do you know, so they're building and, and they'll have great confidence going into to the championship. But again, Wexford are building. They they went fairly well in the division one, division two league. So look, they've got good players there as well and and they're going to be tough challenges and like that like teams might think that like the ty- likes of um, Kilkenny, Galway and Cork are probably a bit ahead of them but look they'll be trying to get wins over us- ourselves and look every year every team is out to win what they can in the championship and this year will be no different for any team. Exactly Um, I suppose your, sis- your sister Emer is uh, hoping to nail down a starting spot come championship Um, she's kind of established herself well there in the league Um. You know, what's it like playing with your sister and having your sister, I suppose, preparing for championship together and heading to training together and so on? Uh, yeah, it's nice, I suppose. Emer, to be fair, is a very good young player and look, she's she's slotted into the team well and, and is picking up a few scores most days out. And look, it's nice, yeah, it's always nice being joined by family members um, on the team. Um, I like to think I've taught her a thing or two and helped her along the way. But yeah, no, it's definitely nice having her there and, and it, being able to enjoy the big days out together is nice. And you're out three weeks in a row. Is that something personally yourself you like or would you rather have more of a break in between games or how do you feel about that? I know, I like it. I think um, what players want is to play matches. So having all the matches come together is nice. Do you know, um, yeah, no I, no complaints there. You want to be getting as many games in, in quick succession as you can. So yeah, no, it's it's a good way. Very yeah. good. Well, if we're all looking forward to the all Ireland Championship, um, a great exciting few weeks ahead and very best. Joined here now by former Tipperary Senior Camogie Selector Lee Lillis. 
Um, and you've just looking ahead to the championships this year. Um, how do you think Tipperary will go? Yeah, look, I suppose we, we'd all be hoping that Tip will do very well in the championship this year. Um, they're coming into it off a very good lead campaign. They were extremely unlucky against Kilkenny. Um, I suppose I thought we, we tired a little bit against Kilkenny and that was it. And I suppose um, I expect that Bill and his team will have that right for championship too as well. And look, they're heading into Offaly next weekend and, and looking forward to another great championship. Um, I suppose, yeah, like like you said, we seem to do everything right against Kilkenny Bar win it and then against Cork who played well in patches. Uh, what would be the lessons that you think we need to learn from these to, to make sure, I suppose, that we get over the line in the championship? Yeah, I, I suppose it, it has to be taken into account the physicality of the Cork and the Kilkenny's and the Galway, you know, and, and I suppose the conditioning there is. Anyone who was here last Saturday who saw Cork and Limerick in the Munster final, like, like Cork midfield and half back line, like they're, they're the strength and depth of, of their team is, is unbelievable too as well. And when you're a back line and they're running at you all day long, you know, when they play that running game, I suppose, you know, you do tire. And I suppose that's been a, tip, a thing, I think, for Tip, I suppose, that they probably need to watch a little bit. You know, they make great changes in terms of the forward line and stuff as well. But I do think we're, we're tiring maybe from midfield and, and the half back line just with maybe five, ten minutes to go. And I suppose it's probably costing us then in terms of freeze and mistakes and stuff as well. And is there a particular player maybe that you think in the panel that you'd like to see getting maybe runs, like you say, coming on, freshen up the team maybe late in the game? Or? Yeah, look, I, I suppose I, I would have spoken briefly on the strength and depth of the panel. And then I, I know Bill would always be one of the starters and finishers and stuff as well, you know. And you have a great mix there of experience and youth in that panel there. You know, you have you know, you have the likes of, of Laura Lucknan, you have Miriam Camp, you have all those girls who, who are still very young but have played at the top level. And then you have new players on to it like um, Eva Heffern you know who brings that youth to it as well so look there's a great combination there in that panel and I suppose it, 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 at the end of the day it's about the panel really and truly and I suppose we've seen that with Cork and we've seen that with Kilkenny you know Kilkenny make changes in the league final you know and, and they really worked for them I suppose Cork went to make changes against Tip too as well it kind of slowed their thing down so a panel is hugely hugely important I think um, and I think going forward I think it's using that panel is very important. Um, Offaly first uh, then Limerick and then Wexford um, I know in your time maybe you would have, I'm not sure if you played off your Wexford, but I think you would have played Limerick. Um, how, how would you see those three games going or what would you think of the opposition? Yeah, look, I, I suppose at the end of the day, like the expectation is on Tipperary to come out of that group and to win that group really and truly. Um, I suppose I, I had seen Limerick early on in the year um, and I was surprised by it, but I was actually disappointed by them here last Saturday against Cork. I thought they'd have put up a better fight against Cork. Um, I suppose Offaly too as well, Tip have had a comprehensive victory over Offaly as well, you know, and, and, and I suppose I'd be hoping maybe to go out and do the same next weekend too as well. And Wexford then as well, I suppose Wexford could be the, the one who's lying in the long grass too as well, you know, because I suppose Katrina Park is back with Wexford too as well, you know, and, and Wexford have a tradition there, you know, when they get to Championship too as well, you know, they're very hard to beat um, and stuff as well. So look, um, I would expect Tip to top that group, but look, it'll be who knows what will happen in it. And three weeks in a row could be tough going, like you said, it'll test the strength and depth of the panel and stuff. Absolutely, and that's what you have a panel for too as well, you know. Um, but I suppose the weeks that we would have played a few weeks in a row, okay, by the end of it, I, I think um, back in 2019, we ended up playing five weeks in a row, you know, and it actually did benefit us. Um, and I suppose, you know, the more matches you can play, the better. And look, the lads will have the girls very well prepared in terms of resting and looking after themselves and being ready for championship. And I suppose Cot Van has lit up um, the league, you know, with their scoring for freeze and from play. Um, do you see teams going out maybe double marking her or sweeper? Or yeah, you... look, look. I suppose Cot has, I suppose, over the years, you know what I mean? She's been an absolute fantastic servant for Tip Camogie. You know, she is a very difficult player to, to mark to as well. You know, she may well be double marked or a sweeper even in front of her too as well. But look, I suppose that comes down to the rest of the forwards then to do their work and put in, to play their part too as well, which is hugely important. And um, it seems to be settling up six backs. Um, probably a bit um, undecisive there with goalkeepers. I see Anya and Cleaver have both been tried in the league and in the Munster Championship. Do you think Bill has his mind made up? Or? Yeah, I suppose you'd be hoping at this stage he probably does. But I suppose, you know, not taken from either goalkeeper, like you have two fantastic goalkeepers, you know, and very even goalkeepers. And while Anya was an all star goalkeeper, Last year, you know, Quiva was an All-Star and the year before and very unlucky in our opinion, you know, not to get an All-Star. So, you know, when you have two fantastic goalies, it's very hard, you know, and I suppose they both bring their own strengths too as well and they both, you know, so it's, it's fantastic to have that choice, but I suppose it will be a big choice at the end of the day. And then midfield is probably looking like Arena and Roisin maybe are 
Um, I know we had Sarah Friday there in the mm. Munster Championship, but you know she stepped away from the panel now. She's going uh, teaching abroad. So who do you think would be the midfield pair in our? Yeah, look, like it's, it's hard to see past Irina and Roshi. In, in fairness, you know, and their work rate has been phenomenal this year. Um, I think Irina in particular, I think, has really come to the fore this year. You know, in terms of her scoring too as well, and she's a threat going forward there from the midfield position. Um, I suppose Sarah's going to be an awful loss. Um, do you know too as well? And do you know any established, experienced pair? You don't want to be losing them at this stage of championship too as well. So look, I'm sure that would be very disappointing for the lads. And then going into the forwards, probably a couple of spots still up for grabs. Has anyone impressed you in particular this year in the forwards? Yeah, look, I, I suppose caught in particular. Um, Emer McGrath has had a good season so far, you know. Um, and also as well, like, you know, I suppose the girls, you know, they, they just need to kind of step it up. And I think there's a few come off the bench there too as well. I know Emer Heffernan came off the bench, Miriam Campion there as well. So they, you know, have been hugely impressive throughout the year. Thanks very much, Neve, and we look forward to the next few weeks and following Tip's um, progress. Hey, I'm delighted now to be joined by Tiberi Intermediate wing back uh, Emma Carey and regular analyst here on the Camogie Report and Torres Arsfield's player Kate McCormick. Ladies, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Charlene. Uh, two Torres Arsfield's women, I know you know, you know each other very well and teammates and all that. But I suppose we have to start by congratulating Emma uh, on a fantastic win in the Munster final recently. Um, brilliant performance and well done. I'm sure uh, you did a bit of celebrating, but now I suppose it's all concentrating on the championship. Yeah, Just... re re major celebrations done there last week now. <laughs> so I suppose um, just looking back at the Munster final, it was a brilliant performance and obviously great to win, but attitude and everything was brilliant. And I suppose... You know, where did that performance come out of? You know, we hadn't really seen that from the tip intermediates in the league so far. Yeah, I suppose it was a bit of a funny one going into the league. There were still players coming and going from the setup, and you know, we had new management in this year. So I suppose players were adjusting to players, players were adjusting to management, management were, you know, trying out different coaching styles with us as well. Um, and you know, there was days on league matches where we could have been missing five or six girls even um, due to different circumstances. Um, so I really think it was an adjustment period. And I think then when we started to lose a few games and things weren't going our way, confidence just hit an all-time low. And uh, we had actually travelled up to Cavan to play Derry and we'd been beaten by quite a bit. And it was essentially a relegation semi-final. And we actually just came together at the end as a team, um, all of girls, and we chatted and we just said, that this has to stop. Like, we're actually training well, but we're going out then the weekends and we're not doing ourselves any justice. Um, and we just said from there on out, who was there was sticking together and it was all going to be positive. So even if you did something absolutely, you know, crazy on the pitch, you're, you're going to be the first to know it yourself when you did something wrong. Um, and the last thing you need then is someone else on your team maybe barking at you or giving out of that so that it would all be positive, particularly from ourselves on the pitch, that we couldn't always be looking to the sideline for management to give us that spur on. We had to start doing it now as well. Um, and it really did. And we went out then against Dublin in the relegation final and... I think we knew we were going out confident and we knew we had each other's backs and we finally then, you know, started and we started to hurl a bit better. And then that boosted a bit of confidence for then girls to go out again in the Munster final. And really the mindset was really good leading up to that Munster final, that people had that confidence and we knew exactly what our job was. We knew what we needed to do and we, we just did it. And we didn't think past that. We didn't think about, oh, we're going to win it or we're going to lose it. We just knew how we wanted to play, say. Very good. I suppose, Katie, you would have watched a good few of the league games and the two relegation matches. Were you surprised with the win and, I suppose, the manner of the win? Um, I suppose when you looked back on the on the Cork game in particular, I, I was sitting with you at a journey and, like, it, we, we just kept saying that we knew the tip were better than what was on show that day in the first league match. And Cork just seemed so fit and fast and they were running at the backs and they were taking their scores and, and the whole far line for Cork had taken their scores. So going in and playing Cork again, we were a bit like, oh, you know, you'd be apprehensive and the girls hadn't had a great league campaign. But that same Cork team turned up, like you wouldn't be saying the Munster final, oh, they lost players. Right? And that same team turned up, same attitude, same game plan. But Tip stood up, like they were, it, it was like watching a different team, but you could see they'd settled and... Like Dee Dunn had come in and she was a finisher. Like she was finishing great plays, like by by different girls coming up the field. And you know, I think Jenny Grace really stood up as captain. And it just it just seemed like while basically the same team, but just a completely different attitude. And then a few additions like Deirdre Dunn and 
you know, and the younger girls, I suppose, they were nearly blooded in the league, you know, um, Leah Heffernan and these, they were only starting off getting used to it. Like Keenan had them as minors and he was bringing all them in. And like we, I suppose we didn't give them enough credit in that respect either. Like that Tip Intermediate team hadn't played championship last year because of COVID and they'd lost out, like, you know. So I think that we could even have been a bit harsh on them, like, because they'd won the league. Well, I mean, you lost, you won it two years ago. 2019, yeah. Yeah, like we were expecting big things and look, no, you can't be complaining anyway. Two, three years playing with Tip Intermediate to have a league final and a Munster final in the back pocket. Like, mm-hmm. so really, really great. Um, really, really great performance in the Munster final. We were so impressed. It was like watching attitude. It all comes down to attitude, I suppose. After you regrouped, the difference it made was unbelievable. It was everyone, I think, in Tip that was watching that match was so proud of you. And I know as well, actually, in uh, when Jenny was making her speech, um, her winning speech, she come, she thanked the band, I suppose she thanked them as well for believing in them. I thought that was a nice touch. And I suppose kind of alluded to what you said there, Emma, after the Derry game, that seems to be kind of the ter- turning point for you, was it? Or? Yeah, I really do think it was. You know, we were actually down a huge amount of players that day. We had done four or five hours up in a bus early in the morning and then we went out and we underperformed. And even like we were down very little at halftime. I remember looking around and everyone was looking at their feet and that just that belief just wasn't there. Um, and I think that chat just really stood to us. And I don't know what it was, like what the penny dropped, but it seemed to just click with us all. Um, and from there on in, we really just started to gel together. And the thing was, we were actually training well all along. And that was the more frustrating part to go out then. And it, it just kind of all went out the window. And I suppose focus is now on the championship. How are preparations and training going now at the minute? Yeah, it's really good. Sure, the atmosphere in the camp this week has been brilliant, you know, on the back of that win um, between players and management. And, you know, that's, like, I suppose, a part of winning as well, that boost it gives you. And that team bonding, like, just even having the celebrations afterwards, you know, you'll have a chat with someone that, you know, you might typically have that chat with them. Um, so I think it definitely brought everyone a bit closer, everyone gelled, you know, even on the pitch, you could see it, you can see it now off the pitch as well. And um, I suppose we had a really good session there Thursday night, but I just want to just acknowledge that we went away that night then. And unfortunately, one of our teammates, uh, Rosanna O'Donnell, actually lost her dad, who had been quite sick for a while later on that same evening. Um, and I just want to, to mention that here, you know, we're trying to really rally around her at the minute, but just that our thoughts and prayers are with her. Um, you know, Keen has really been talking about our team being a family unit for a number of weeks now. And I suppose more than ever, we're feeling that this weekend um, when someone on our team is going through such a tough time. Exactly. And well said there, Emma. Um, I suppose, Casey, just looking to the group uh, stages, uh, first up is Kerry and then they're uh, home to Leash. Um, you probably know a bit about the Leash team. I know you've taught there for a good few years. You've followed uh, Leash Camogie. Um, you know, how do you think that game would go? Or is, you know, is there a particular player that you think maybe Tip needs to look out for? Yeah, well, look, after that Munster final performance, I think it's going to take a lot to stop this Tipperary team. Like, we see now what, what they have. But to be fair, like, um, I'm a big advocate for Leash Camogie since my time, uh, especially in Montrash Community School, because I taught, uh, well, I had a Camogie team there and they were phenomenal. Like they were, I'll never forget, they shook me to the core because going in, I didn't think they'd be great. And they were brilliant. They got to a Leinster semi-final and I suppose there was three players at the time and they were only in fifth year. Amy Collier, um, Jesse Quinlan and Aideen Lowry. And they're all on that senior team now, on the intermediate team for Leash. Um, I suppose, especially Amy, been suffering with a cruciate injury. She plays centre forward for Leash now, which she's... Um, Ron and my cousin Ron Amara came down one day and did a training session with me with them and he picked her out straight away he said she is phenomenal so I think that um, whoever is centre back that day will have their hands full with Amy she's just a natural skillful hurler like she's catching balls and she's a really long strike so she'd be the one I'd be looking out for in particular and then Aideen Lowry's in goals and she won that Soar and Star award last year she's a phenomenal goalie a uh, great shot stopper and very young. She's only, it's a very young leash team. So I think that maturity wise and everything that Tip will have the upper hand there. But that Kerry team as well, I remember Jordan, we went to see them in the league against Tip. Like they are a good team. There's been a lot of development going on in Kerry and 
they're they seem to be a real unit. They really work hard together. So you know, Tip won't have it easy in the championship either. We saw that in the league, but like if whatever's after happening, that magic spell that Emma's talking about, we hope that stays going because it'd be great. It's great for Tip Camogie to be, you know, getting those days, getting the headlines on the Tipperary Star and the Nationalist, you know, like they need those days. That's what keeps guys going. Exactly. It's great to pick up some silverware. Um, so like uh, Emma, or like Katie mentioned there, Emma, playing Kerry, um, also have to play Derry. And you met them both already this year. Um, how would you prepare then for like a rematch? Is it an advantage or a disadvantage the fact that you played them already? I know teams find it hard to beat the same team twice in the one year. How, how do you see this going? Yeah, I think it's a definite advantage. You know, we know what they have. We know their style of play. Um, like I said, we were missing girls throughout the league, at, particularly at different matches. That's not to say they weren't either. Um, so you know a certain amount. Um, and like that, you know, people try things out in the league. They try positions. They try different girls. Um, but I, I really felt like those two teams particularly, they were quite strong with their runners from the centre of the field. But so too were Cork. You know, a lot of it was driven by their midfields running through the centre and having those kind of, maybe the wing forwards, like I used to find playing wing back, the wing forwards play very far out with a lot of these teams and it's the runs in. But I think we handled that really well against Cork. So, yeah, I'm I'm not intimidated to be up against them again. I'm actually really looking forward to playing them again and actually doing ourselves some justice. Get a bit of revenge. Exactly, well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be better. You're in a better position than I think they are, you know. Um, yeah. And what about having to travel to both these games? So um, it's a pity he got leash at home, which is probably the easiest one to have to, yeah. to travel to. Especially Derry, you know, trick. It is, like, it's not ideal, but to be honest, it's nearly part and parcel of it at this stage. Um, like Katie mentioned earlier, you know, I only came into the Tip Intermediate setup three years ago, and, you know, we didn't even get to play a championship last year. But even the league last year, we were travelling up to the north of the, count or the country again. Um, and, you know, what we've gotten very used to preparing for that, you know, whether it's the compression tights on the way up and it's bringing our pillows and our headphones and having our food prepped, getting in two stops if we think that's better than the one, stretching the legs, having a coffee. You know, everyone has their own little routine um, and we've done it a good few times now that we kind of have that down. Um, so, yeah, and the girls, you know, take it serious. They, they think about their food, you know, a few days beforehand. We discuss what are we eating, what are we bringing you know what time we get into bed what time we get up all those things like and they are just a general chat that goes on you know it's not a matter of falling onto the bus unprepared that morning to head five hours up the country exactly so you'll be well prepared for it um Katie you've yeah. been following this intermediate team um throughout the league and um I know in the last few years as well what what have you seen this year though or like what positives do you think that you really need to bring into the championship and maybe what are the key areas you think they need to work on, and just in your opinion? Um, I suppose there was, I can't even remember, there was a league match there, and I, um, this player had no right to win the ball. She had no right to win the ball, but the hurrying and the hassling and the fight she did, Mary Burke, was on a different level, energy that she brought to it. And I came away from that league match going, Jake was like, if, if a few more could bring that, they'd nearly, they'd nearly have won that match or whatever, but... I think that happened in the Munster final. And if they can keep that going, that work rate, that fight, that winning the ball, you shouldn't win, win dirty ball, like just competing. And um, yeah, going forward, like it was just, they set up great plays in the Munster final. And if they brought that forward, that would be great. Like, you know, Nicola Lucknan made great runs, but she was she was able to identify that she might not have scored from that distance and was picking up Pete Gunn or whoever to put it over the bar. And just that, like smart play is what occurred. Like, and, they weren't hitting the ball wide just for the sake of taking the shot. And I think that was the big difference between the Munster final win and the previous league matches, like if you were going down to technicalities. But um, yeah, if they bring that doggedness in that fight, that would be like, everyone wants to see the Tip Intermediate team get into an All-Ireland. We all want to see them playing in Coke Park and getting what they deserve and get the, all the three boxes ticked. I'd say Emma, that's what Emma wants. <laughs> they need that. Like, and, and Emma is one of the best I know in Club Camogie to be dog and win the ball she shouldn't win either so um, I'm sure you should be doing that too but that's what they need just that fight that, that no one's going to beat into that ball and Mary Burke anyway in my opinion is the one that she she's the one who displays that in every single match she goes out and plays Very good um, so Emma like Casey has alluded to there um, 
you're in Pacific Intermediate South now for the last three years. You have your Division Two Title One. You have a Monster Title One. Uh, how bad did you want to win that All Ireland? Yeah, sure. That's the ultimate goal, isn't it? I mean, we don't just set out to win the league, or we don't just set out to be happy at Munster Championship. Like the end goal really is the All Ireland series, and yeah, I think it's completely achievable. I really thought we'd actually nearly do it two years ago, like, and that was only my first year in. But you know, we lost the semi final that I I thought we were going to win by two points to Galway, um, and I suppose this year just didn't kick off the way we expected to, and we've really now started to bring that back, and things are starting to click. And I think that belief system, like I mentioned earlier, is really starting to come in. Um, but look, we take it one match at a time. Um, you know, our sights are set firmly now on Kerry in two weeks' time and travelling down there and getting our win um, on their home turf. Um, and then we'll just keep ploughing on from there. Um, you know, it's going to happen very quick. The matches are back to back. So, yeah, just take each week now. Thanks very much, Emma. Uh, Katie, I'll leave a final word with you. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really competitive uh, championship, not just this group, all the groups. I think every team um, will be confident that they're a serious contender. Um, how hopeful are you that we could get out of this group? Or Yeah, well, I'd, be, I'd be very confident. Like, I uh, don't want to sound bad either, but if you asked me this after the league, I would have been like, oh, God, you wouldn't know, Kerry, you're after... They were the underdogs there and they really fought. But that Tip team in the Munster final, as I said repeatedly, was different gravy. So um, I think Tip will, I think Tip should top the group. Um, they'll be at my number one. And then just because merely uh, it's only a fondness out leash, I'll be hoping they might get number two. But that's just out of um, having worked with a few of those girls. But if it came down to Tip and Leash, I'd want Tip to win. Very good. Good answer, um, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there, folks. Thanks very much for coming on just to uh, preview the Intermediate Championship. So like we said, first up is away to Kerry um, on the 24th. And uh, then you have a home game against Leash and then away to Derry. So really looking forward to next few weeks and following your progress. And uh, best wishes to you, Emma, and to all the players and the management. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Commodity Report podcast, where we spoke to Super Value Ambassador Kevin Hanley and uh, we also previewed the senior and intermediate championship so a jam-packed uh, podcast for you this week if you liked it make sure to give us a like and subscribe to the Tipperary Camogie YouTube channel.